SCP-507, otherwise known as the Reluctant Dimension Hopper, is an anomaly with a rare condition. Don't worry though, it's not contagious, we think. No, this otherwise seemingly ordinary fellow possesses a rather unpredictable anomalous trait. He can travel to other dimensions. That sounds great in theory, right? Who among us wouldn't want to visit alternate universes and see worlds beyond our wildest imaginations? Well, the problem is that SCP-507 can't actually control this ability. It's not something he can do on a whim or by thinking about it. Instead, he is relocated to other universes seemingly at random, which can prove pretty intrusive during an average day in the life of SCP-507. 6 AM. It was still early, far too early for SCP-507 to be awake, but even while he slept, the Foundation was making sure they had the necessary measures in place to keep him comfortably contained. Or at least, until he next disappeared. Your assignment, Officer Dalton, the security chief said boredly, sliding a file across the desk. You want me to be the handler for this reluctant dimension hopper? Dalton replied after she had skimmed through the file in front of her. Special containment procedures for SCP-507 clearly dictate that an agent must be present with the anomaly whenever he leaves his private quarters, the chief answered with a sigh, having barely sipped his morning coffee. Just keep an eye on him, do what he asks as long as the requests don't violate internal security. <clears throat> Sir, with respect, Dalton cleared her throat. This feels like a waste of my talents. I'm as combat proficient and well-trained as all other security operatives. Why do you want me playing daycare for someone whose own files refer to him as, quote, sporting no outstanding characteristics? What, you thought we'd hire you and immediately put you in the pen with 682? The security chief scoffed. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, officer. This posting is a blessing, believe me. I've given agents just as competent as you tougher posts, and the number of them who died on the job, eh, well, let's just say it makes it easier being up this early in the day. But sir, I could be doing more. Trust me, start small. You'll have your hands full with 507. He may not seem like much, but he's slippery, the chief said. You mean he'll attempt to escape? Dalton asked. The facility's head of security didn't give an answer. Instead, he dismissed the officer to her posting. Making her way through the corridors towards 507's containment cell, Officer Dalton studied her briefing, reading it through multiple times so she understood her assignment. She was expecting her charge to be unruly, attempting escape at any opportunity. What she had overlooked in her haste was that SCP-507 wasn't intentionally using his dimension-hopping powers to escape. In fact, he couldn't help it. 8 AM. Eventually growing tired of waiting outside the entrance to the reluctant Dimension Hopper's quarters, Officer Dalton began repeatedly banging her fist against the door. SCP-507, wake yourself up! She yelled impatiently. There came the sound of tired groaning from the other side of the door, followed by something person-sized falling over in a daze. Getting to its feet, the source of the noise shuffled closer and opened the door, all while Dalton kept knocking. It's very loud, you know. <sighs> SCP-507 groaned, eyes half-lidded, practically still asleep. I'm your new handler, the officer announced plainly. Good for you. <sighs> the Dimension Hopper yawned. I'm tired of going back to sleep. Like hell you are, Dalton snapped, striding into the room. I've been waiting outside for two hours. Look, miss, SCP-507 sighed. I get the Foundation has to keep an eye on me in case I, you know... He made a gesture with his hands, jazzily shaking them. You get the picture, he continued. But I'm normally in bed for the first half of the day. First of all, Dalton replied sternly, I'm an officer in the Foundation. As such, you'll refer to me as Officer Dalton or Ma'am. Is that clear? She didn't give 507 a chance to answer. Secondly, make no mistake, I'm not your babysitter. I'm here to ensure the Foundation's continued security, not yours. And if one of your escape attempts poses a threat to this organization, then I am authorized to carry out a termination order. In short, don't screw around with me. SCP-507 looked sheepish, like a schoolchild who'd just been told off by the principal. So, am I right in thinking you'd like to go by nicknames? What do I call you? He paused for a second, a cheeky smile crawling across his face as he figured out a way he could slyly mess with the no-nonsense officer. You can call me Grabnock the Destroyer. SCP-507 replied. 
Officer Dalton rolled her eyes. This was clearly going to be a long day. 10 a.m. Sure enough, the newly appointed handler's first cause for concern came when SCP-507 suddenly blinked out of existence while brushing his teeth. She'd urged him to go get himself ready and freshened up, and no sooner had Gravnock stepped into the bathroom, he disappeared, his toothbrush clattering into the sink. Officer Dalton stared in disbelief at the spot where he had just been, bowled over by how brazen and how quickly the anomalous interdimensional traveler had tried to give her the slip. Immediately, Dalton went to raise the alarm, only to be ineffectively reassured by her superiors. This kind of thing happens all the time, and oh, he'll reappear soon, just keep sweeping the facility until he shows up, were all she was met with, and they did little to quell Dalton's frustration. Eventually, SCP-507 reappeared, wandering around one of the corridors of the Foundation facility and whining about a headache that usually accompanied his dimensional displacement. What the hell are you playing at vanishing like that? Dalton barked. I need to eat something, Gravnock groaned, ignoring her question. I displaced before breakfast. It always makes me nauseous when it's on an empty stomach. That's your primary concern right now? The officer sighed. Well, yeah, SCP-507 shrugged. There was no food in that other dimension, at least none that I could find. Begrudgingly pushing aside her frustration, Dalton escorted Gravnock to the Foundation mess hall. What else was there, SCP-507? She asked, breaking the silence as he ate quietly. We'll have to file a report about where you went. Not answering to that, he chuckled. You've got to use the nickname. Seriously, Dalton replied. Okay, fine. What else was in that universe? Grabnock. The whole thing. Grabnock the Destroyer, she added through gritted teeth. Not a lot, honestly, the Dimension Hopper shrugged. Some universes are just like that. This one just had a big salt plain and nothing else. You mean like a desert? Dalton probed. No, a salt plain, Grabnock corrected her. You know, like a glass salt shaker you have at a fancy dinner table, except with wings. And what was in the salt plain? She asked, confused. I think it was white pepper? SCP-507 answered sarcastically. 12 p.m. After he finished his meal, SCP-507 seemed to be feeling better and requested to be taken back to his quarters to use his computer. He'd been granted one by the Foundation, with limited internet access and a strict limit on what he could access and upload. However, it was while escorting him back that Officer Dalton realized her charge had once again relocated while her back was turned. Dalton once again proceeded to traverse the facility's corridors checking in with other security staff and telling her fellow personnel to keep her posted if SCP-507 reappears. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to her, the reluctant Dimension Hopper had found himself in a particularly unique situation. Arriving in a new alternate universe, SCP-507 was greeted by familiar headaches, standing in a spot that mirrored the Foundation site he had been in a moment before. In fact, most of the details about this universe were almost identical to the one he had just left, apart from all the dinosaurs. It quickly became apparent, at the sight of a velociraptor wearing a lab coat, that this was a reality where the meteor that wiped out early life on Earth had never actually hit. As a result, the reptiles that had inhabited the world centuries before had been able to evolve into the dominant species, while humanity's earliest ancestors had never climbed out of the primordial soup. SCP-507 found himself in a facility overrun with reptilian researchers, all working for an organization called the Scaly Carnivorous Predator Foundation. Naturally, the dinosaurs were fascinated by the sudden and inexplicable existence of this pink, fleshy creature appearing out of thin air. Although the researchers working at this version of the Foundation were seemingly well-versed in the study of the anomalous. Unfortunately, there was something of a language barrier between SCP-507 and the dinosaurs of this dimension. A kind, calm request for him to come quietly so the research reptiles could run tests ended up sounding like a vicious, bloodthirsty snarl. And so, the reluctant Dimension Hopper turned heel and ran away from a flock of raptors in Foundation lab coats, until he eventually displaced back to his original dimension again. 1.30 p.m. Right, sure they did, 507. Dalton sighed after her charge had reappeared and recounted his story of sentient dinosaurs running an alternate version of the Foundation. And I bet Jeff Goldblum and Laura Dern were both public enemies in this universe too. I wasn't in Jurassic Park, 
SCP-507 argued, his head splitting. I could have been eaten alive if those raptors had caught up to me. Officer Dalton helped the blonde-haired and green-eyed dimension traveler to his feet and began marching him towards a debriefing room. As part of their continued research into not only SCP-507 but the wider multiverse, the reluctant dimension hopper often had to describe his unplanned expeditions after the fact. Screw that, I almost died, he protested. I don't want to go and give a debrief, I'll do it later. It's got to be past lunchtime in this universe, right? He asked. You eat after debrief, Dalton insisted. Nah, I want lunch, SCP-507 retorted. I need to recharge, I'll go sit with Fernan. Reluctantly remembering she'd been told to do whatever the Dimension Hopper asked, Officer Dalton changed course and walked him towards the enlarged containment area housing SCP-082. Ferdinand was genetically an ordinary human being who had grown into a giant through some unknown means. Given that SCP-507 was usually permitted to freely interact with most other relatively harmless anomalies, he had developed something of a friendship with SCP-082. As a result, Grabnock considered his visits to be a vacation of sorts. Despite Ferdinand's grotesque appearance, the giant was actually very friendly, especially towards SCP-507. The creature's body was dense with muscle and fat, heavily scarred and his face disproportionate to the rest of him. Yet both SCP-082 and SCP-507 seemed to converse jovially and enjoyed each other's company over lunch. That is, until the reluctant dimension hopper unceremoniously displaced again, midway through talking to his giant friend about his latest multiversal excursion. SCP-082 turned to Officer Dalton the second Grabnock had vanished and shrugged casually. Uh, he does that. 4 p.m. Over the course of the next few hours, at least as the time passed in his home dimension, SCP-507 was relocated into a universe where everyone on Earth was a sentient hot dog. It was a jarring change to adapt to, although not quite as initially frightening as encountering the dinosaurs on his previous outing. The hot dog population were a bit more guarded than the inhabitants of the last universe he'd been to, but after ensuring them that he meant no harm, SCP-507 quickly established a rapport with some of them. The first question he had was whether, like the dinosaurs, these anthropomorphic baseball stand snacks had naturally evolved into the dominant species over time. SCP-507 was surprised to learn that, in actuality, these hot dog creatures had previously been human, until a strange plague had befallen them several hundred thousand years prior. Ironically, this had all taken place before their civilization had ever developed the practice of eating sausages in bread. Okay, so let me follow that up with another question, SCP-507 declared. Make it quick, man, I'm late for work, the large talking hot dog replied. So, when you all changed into hot dogs, did you really become sausages, then develop bread coats to wear, or like, are you both? Wait, what do you mean? The hot dog person replied. You know, because technically a hot dog isn't a hot dog until you put it in a bread roll, SCP-507 explained. So, are you all actually sausages, or are you like uh, coalesced beings of both sausage and bread? The ensuing political unrest, civil turmoil, and ethical outcry that overtook the hot dog dimension following SCP-507's question made him really glad he displaced back home not long after. He couldn't help feel a little disheartened too. Up until the hot dogs were trying to place him over a giant grill, SCP-507 had actually found he'd been enjoying the time he spent there. Still, he was grateful to be back in a universe populated by actual humans once again. Even if the first one he met upon returning, Officer Dalton, was furious that he'd been gone for so long. 7 p.m. You know, I'm wise to your act, she replied. SCP-507 had just requested dinner, although for some reason pointed out that he wanted to avoid eating hot dogs for a while. What act? He asked. This thing you do, your disappearing act, the officer responded. You're not this bumbling interdimensional traveler. You're just an immature brat, 507. You have to call me Grabnock the Whoever or Tommy or Guy or whatever the hell your name is at this precise moment in time. Dalton snapped angrily, forcing SCP-507 to go silent. You just teleport, that's what you do. You zip out of one place and reappear in the next and give personnel like me the runaround. And it's a hoot, it's just a big joke you can pull on all of us. That would be bad enough if you didn't come back with all these absurd stories on top of it. What's next, huh? A dimension where the Foundation is run by cats? Or a world where everyone is a sentient fart? 
I don't make it up, SCP-507 replied meekly. The place I end up in are all real. I, I don't get to pick where I displace to or how weird it is when I get there. No, I said that I figured you out, Dalton retorted. You make up some wild story, these fool yarns you keep spinning to confuse people. Then you can request anything you want. That's your real anomalous trait, Grabnock the Destroyer. You're able to pull the wool over our eyes and use it to garner special privileges. A computer, almost total freedom to roam around the Foundation at will. Food and board, anything you want, you get! There was a long, awkward pause. SCP-507 looked miserable. He was aware that as cruel as she was being, Officer Dalton's anger was born more out of frustration than anything else. He couldn't help his interdimensional displacement disorder. Sure, it had meant the Foundation offered him certain treatments someone might consider to be preferential, but he was still trapped, not so much by the facility or even the Foundation themselves. Instead, SCP-507 was trapped by his condition, unable to freely choose which universe he stayed in. 8 p.m. Dalton had escorted SCP-507 to debrief, then back to his quarters. The entire time, an air of uncomfortable silence followed them. She still wasn't entirely convinced that her charge's anomalous ability wasn't all a sham, at least in part. But standing guard at his bedroom door, she could see him sulkily browsing the internet on his computer. He was quiet, and Dalton couldn't help that it did make her feel a little bad for losing her temper at him earlier. Hey, um, 507, she said poking her head through the doorway. He didn't respond, mindlessly scrolling without turning around. Stepping inside, Dalton closed the gap between them by walking towards SCP-507, sat in his computer chair. Listen, SCP-507, she repeated, then realizing why he wasn't replying or paying her any notice. With a roll of her eyes and heavy, exasperated sigh, Officer Dalton readdressed the reluctant dimension hopper. Hey, Grabnock the Destroyer. Hearing that made SCP-507 turn around in an instant, giving her his full attention. Ma'am? He said, still sulking but at least willing to speak. I'm very sorry for what I said before, Dalton admitted. I don't enjoy this, you know, SCP-507 said solemnly. One minute I'm somewhere familiar, the next I'm thrust into some horrible nightmare where everyone's got macaroni and cheese for hands, or there's so many spiders everywhere. Oof. It's not just a joke to me, and it sucks. There were tears in the Dimension Hopper's eyes, and Officer Dalton reached out to pat him on the shoulder. I know and I'm sorry for saying you made it all up." She offered a smile. Then, in a blink of an eye, they were both gone. 10 p.m. Every other time that SCP-507 had displaced during the day, the Foundation had barely paid it any mind, not even reacting when Officer Dalton had brought it to their attention. But the moment she had disappeared, along with the reluctant Dimension Hopper, security staff and researchers went into a frenzy. Alarms sounded. Personnel were patrolling the corridors en masse, sweeping room to room with flashlights in the hopes not only that SCP-507 would return, but Officer Dalton would still be with him when he did. It had been a few hours since the pair of them had vanished. The sun had long since set, and night had fallen. Yet there was still no sign, until a researcher heard the sound of someone sobbing coming from one of the storage closets. Calling it in, a trio of Foundation security cautiously approached the closet and threw open the door only to find SCP-507 sat inside, weeping floods of tears. Immediately, despite how late at night it was, the reluctant Dimension Hopper was told he needed to debrief on where he had just been and what had happened to his handler, Officer Dalton. SCP-507 began to describe displacing to a dimension he had visited a number of times before, a reality that was shrouded in complete darkness, no sunlight at all. A familiar sound had instantly told the reluctant Dimension Hopper where he was and that he wasn't alone. Doubly so, because Officer Dalton's hand had been on his shoulder, completely by accident, she had transported there with him. Switching on the flashlight he took with him everywhere, SCP-507 was horrified to see a figure who had tormented him before. He wore a black business suit. The matching sunglasses he had on made the figure resemble a man in black agent. It leered at him and Officer Dalton with an unnaturally wide smile that had haunted SCP-507's nightmares ever since their first encounter. Back again, the figure had said, leaning in towards SCP-507. And this time, you brought a friend. He took her, the reluctant Dimension Hopper said quietly as he sat in the debriefing room. 
The smiling man got her. We'd better get you cleaned up and sent to bed, 507, one of the researchers said, forcing a reassuring smile. We'll assign you a new handler in the morning. Now go and check out SCP-507 Reluctant Dimension Hopper. And can SCP-096 chase its victims across the multiverse? For more background on the man who can travel the multiverse, and quite literally, can't stop.